Hey guys, Curly Susie here from Cape Breton, Nova Scotia. Welcome to my 12 week pregnancy vlog. If you are new to my channel, I have a channel that is primarily about how to style naturally curly hair, which is probably kind of hard for you guys to believe right now because uh, it is pouring rain outside and so my hair is a little bit crazy. Uh, but anyway, I have always wanted to do pregnancy vlogs. And so if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel because I'm going to be doing uh, updates every single week. Yeah. Before I get right into the vlog, I'm just going to talk about something really quick and then I'm going to try not to dwell on it too much, but um, just a little bit of my background. I do have a two and a half year old son, Wilson. Uh, my pregnancy with him was like super easy. I got pregnant right away. Um, and even my birth and my delivery and all of that was like textbook uh, easy peasy and then about a year and a half after we had him my husband and I started trying to have another baby um, and I got pregnant pretty much right away and I was pregnant for 12 weeks and then I ended up having what is called a missed miscarriage so I was almost 13 weeks um, but the baby had passed away just before the eight week mark and so I had a very like just horrific um, miscarriage and I did make a video about that and I will post it um, but it was very challenging for me um, and then about four months later I got pregnant again and I had another miscarriage right before the eight week mark and that one wasn't physically as traumatizing but it was still uh, really hard on me so this is my after that I had a chemical pregnancy so this I would say is like my fourth time being pregnant in like a year so it's been like a really hard year for me the reason that I feel so comfortable vlogging this pregnancy is because um, I had an ultrasound and everything looked perfect the baby's heartbeat is strong um, and I'm gonna actually I have like a little Doppler so I'm gonna let you guys listen to the baby's heartbeat today in this video um, and then oh pardon me then the other thing is that let's say something bad does happen eventually. Um, I feel like my YouTube family really, really helped me to get through those difficult times. And I feel like I helped a lot of people out there by making uh, the video about my miscarriage. And so I just wanna share this whole journey with you guys, like regardless of the outcome. So anyway, that being said, I know that sounds like a downer, but I am thinking very positively. I'm 12 weeks pregnant. Um, I was going to start vlogging this pregnancy at eight weeks, but I absolutely couldn't because I was so sick. And that's what I'm going to start talking about right now. I'm going to talk about my symptoms probably between week eight and right now. So today is a good day. Today I feel like is like a new day or let's say three days ago, I started feeling a little bit better. Um, up until that point, I was so ill and just so nauseated that I couldn't do anything. I think I had one day where I filmed a hair video because I had a half decent morning and I was home. Um, but other than that, I haven't been able to do anything. Um, you guys that follow me, you know I only work like three days a week. I do work as a registered nurse. Um, and the thing that kind of saved me is that I have no morning sickness. So when I wake up in the morning until around one o'clock in the afternoon, I was perfectly fine. And then the nausea would start at one, two o'clock, three o'clock, it would get a little bit worse. Then I would get off of work and by the time I got home from work, I would be in agony. Like I mean so nauseated that I couldn't even function. I just was like pacing around my house. I would have to go in my bedroom and I downloaded this like anti-nausea soothing music on YouTube. I know it sounds ridiculous, but that's how desperate I was. And I would just blast that in my ear. Um, and I tried everything. Uh, so I met with my doctor because I probably had, I probably had a five day stretch where I ate nothing. Like I might've eaten two pieces of toast, um, and some juice and some Gatorade and I couldn't eat anything at all. So my doctor did tell me that it was okay for me to take Gravol. I was taking Gravol and Zofran, um, and it still wasn't really cutting it. I was just battling. Like I was just trying to take it one day at a time and just trying not to be like super depressed and just kind of trying to make it through each day. Um, and speaking of being depressed, I'm not somebody that normally suffers from anxiety and depression, but when I'm pregnant, I usually get anxiety and depression uh, for the first 12 weeks. And it's not really related to the 
the pregnancy or like fear or anything like that. I think it's just brought on by hormones and I'm just like super down in the dump. So my first 12 weeks were not fun. Um, I had extreme exhaustion and extreme nausea and again, um, I was having to take multiple different things for nausea and just basically barely making it through the day. Um, in these pregnancy videos, I'm going to talk about supplements I'm taking and talk about like medications and things like that, but I just want you guys to know that um, everything that I've taken, I've discussed with my doctor and each pregnant person is very different and so just because I say that I was taking Gravol or I was taking something like that, I'm not recommending that you do it, I'm recommending that you go um, and talk to your doctor about it and I mean, I really mean that. Um, but I will mention that. Uh, so I was taking Gravol and I was taking Zofran and I also had to start taking uh, an iron supplement because I am like sort of anemic. I've always been sort of anemic. If I don't watch what I'm eating all the time, my hemoglobin drops pretty fast and because I wasn't able to eat at all, um, my hemoglobin was kind of going down the tubes uh, at the same time which is, was making me like more exhausted, more nauseated and just making me not want to eat anything at all. And so the iron supplements were just adding fuel to the fire. Like they just tear my stomach apart and like I wasn't eating anything. So it was really bothering me and making me really just feel like constipated and bloated and just awful. So I had an awful, I'd say four weeks were awful. Like from week eight until now have been unbelievable. I feel like unless you've been through it, you can't even imagine how sick I was. Um, but anyway, so I'm back to normalish now. Um, I'm just trying to eat small meals and eat healthy and drink lots of water. And I'm back to taking my prenatal vitamins and I'm able to take my iron. Um, and I'm not having to take anything for nausea right now. So uh, I'm feeling a little bit better and I'm feeling like making these videos. So um, hopefully starting next week, um, the videos will be a little bit shorter and I'll be able to talk about just my symptoms for the week. So those are my symptoms up to the 12 week mark. Extreme nausea, extreme exhaustion, I was kind of depressed, I was just feeling bad about myself in general. Did you ever wake up in the morning and you're just like, I'm disgusting, I'm hideous, my body is gross. Like I just was so down on myself, which I am not normally like, like normally when I'm pregnant and my body starts to change, I put on a ton of fluid when I was pregnant with my son. I didn't get hung up on that. I was like, this is amazing. I'm making a person. Who cares? I'll get back in shape eventually. Um, like I was super easy going. I wore tight fitting clothes. I was chubby everywhere. My face was chubby. My arms were chubby. I didn't care. I just was so happy to be pregnant. Um, but the last 12 weeks, I just felt so uncomfortable in my own skin and just fat and I just kept saying negative things about myself and it just again like it wasn't a good 12 weeks but um I feel like I'm on the other side of that now so the other weird symptoms I have I had with my son one of them is that like I get razor burns super easily so it's like really hard for me to shave like my legs my bikini line and my armpits which is brutal when it's the summer and you have a pool and you have people over all the time um no matter what I use to try to shave my legs, I get like super bad razor burn. Um, and it's weird because it only happens to me when I'm pregnant. So I'm just like itchy. My skin is kind of acting up. Um, I don't really suffer from headaches or anything like that. I do have sore boobs, but nothing crazy. Um, and one thing I want to mention too, if you're watching this and you're either like earlier in your pregnancy or around the same amount pregnant as I am, um, is that throughout all of this and all of these symptoms that I was having, I did have a few days in my first trimester where I just didn't have any symptoms for two days. So because of my history, I just automatically assumed that there was something wrong with the baby or that I wasn't pregnant anymore. But then um, the good news is that like two days later, my symptoms returned and I'm having a perfectly healthy pregnancy. So if you're watching this and you're not having any symptoms, it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong. When I was pregnant with my son, I barely had any symptoms at all and he was perfectly healthy. Everybody on YouTube always lists like their pregnancy cravings, but unfortunately and very disappointingly to me, I have had no cravings. Um, I had the extreme opposite. So... Um, I just didn't want to eat anything at all. Nothing sounds good to me. 
even like crackers and things that make me feel good. Like I just force myself to eat them. Um, when I was feeling better in the very beginning, I was kind of craving soup a little bit and salty things. Uh, but really, over the last four weeks, um, I haven't been craving anything. Uh, things that have helped a little bit, like I said, are crackers, plain french fries. Um, I've eaten a few popsicles, uh, water with lemon in it. Um, and speaking of lemons, like when I was really, really nauseated, one of the things that helped when I couldn't even drink water was that I had like a bunch of lemon slices in a baggie and I would hold them under my nose and smell the lemons. Guys, that is how pathetic I was. So we're going to talk about the baby a little bit and the app I have been using is the Pregnancy Plus app and I'll show you why if I can find it, what I'm looking for. So this is the Pregnancy Plus app. I don't really like any of the pregnancy apps anymore because I just read through all of the information on them so I just feel like I'm just reading the same things over and over again. But it says that this week in week 12 your baby is now about the size of a kiwi However, even at this size, it is still difficult to determine the sex on an ultrasound. Um, your baby now has the ability to open and close its fists and make sucking movements with the muscles in its mouth. It's just a matter of time before the thumb and mouth meet. All of the organs of your baby's digestive system are developing into, the, into their final shapes, including the stomach, the stomach, oh my god, the stomach, liver, pancreas, and intestines. Even your baby's lungs are practicing breathing, um, but only with the amniotic fluid. So anyway, that's a little bit about the baby. And what I like the most about this app is like, I don't know how well you can see that, but the graphic of the baby is really real looking and detailed. And you can actually hear like the fluid and you can hear the heartbeat once the heartbeat starts beating. And then the other thing is you press this little ruler and it gives you the approximate size of the baby. So this is a scale, you know, picture of the baby. And if I hold it up to my belly, I can get a sense of how big the baby actually is. So my husband actually really likes this too. You can do like a 3D look at the baby. Um, yeah, I just really like that. And so, you know, I don't want to have too many things downloaded on my phone because I find I run out of storage on my phone all the time, but this was the app I chose. If there's a better app or an app that you guys like more, uh, then please let me know. But basically that's what's been going on with the baby. Up until this point, I had a few tests done, so I did have an early ultrasound just because of my history. Um, and that was, I was nine and a half weeks, and the baby was measuring perfectly, and the heartbeat was 170, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. Um, so when my husband and I went to that ultrasound, it was a really big deal for me because my last two pregnancies, when I went for my ultrasound, there was no heartbeat, and the baby was no longer living. So... When I got there um, and the ultrasound technician said, like, do you want to see the baby and turn the screen and we could see the heartbeat and everything like that was just a really great moment for us. So um, that made me really happy. And then the other thing that I did, um, aside from having blood work and stuff like that, is I did have my first OB appointment. And your first OB appointment is pretty much the same everywhere, I'm pretty sure. They just ask you a ton of health history questions. Make sure you know what not to eat and make sure that you're following a healthy diet and that you're not like having depression and that you have the supports that you need. Um, and I was only 10 weeks, so my OB didn't listen for the baby's heartbeat. And that's one thing that was causing me like a little bit of stress. So I did get one of these. Um, this is a baby Doppler. And this is by Sonaline B. You can get this on Amazon. I borrowed this from my friend, but I ordered one my first pregnancy and then I ended up giving it away. But this works really, really well and it gives me a lot of peace of mind. The only thing that I will say is depending on your own anatomy and where your baby is sitting in your uterus, you might not be able to find the heartbeat for like 12, 13, 14 weeks. Like it might be hard for you to find. I was lucky enough to be able to find it around 10 weeks. But guys, the baby is so low at that point. The baby's basically like sitting behind your pubic bone. So you have to hold it down really low and be really patient. But I'm going to show you guys like a little clip of the heartbeat. So this is my heartbeat and you can tell. Boom, 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 boom. And here's the baby's heartbeat. So that has been giving me a lot of peace of mind. This was like my real only pregnancy purchase um, I've got uh, since this pregnancy started. And I'm really 
really glad um, that I have it. And when I say pregnancy purchase, I'm just saying that out of habit, but I borrowed this, but you can purchase this um, on Amazon and I will leave a link below. So let's talk about the baby's heart rate a little bit and I'm gonna kind of wrap things up a bit. So the baby's heart rate was 170 and based on the old wives tale, if the heart rate is above 145 or 140 or something, it's a girl. So here comes my big dilemma. <laughs> I honestly feel like I'm having another boy. I've got all the stuff for a boy. I have a boy. Wilson has two cousins that live directly across the street that are like his siblings. They're similar in age and they are two little girls. So I just think it would be nice for him to have another little boy to play with. Um, and But since I heard that the heartbeat was high, now I just have it in my mind that I'm having a girl and we have no girl names. So I'm gonna talk about this a little bit more next week in next week's video. You guys know any unique girl names that are pretty? Please, please post them um, in the comment section below because this is driving me and my husband crazy. We are gonna find out the gender and maybe we are having a boy and then we don't have to worry about it, um, but that won't be for another month. So in until that time comes, I am going to be obsessing about finding girl names. All right, so now I'm gonna show you the bump shot. And guys, I'm only 12 weeks. My uterus is only as big as a grapefruit, but I definitely, definitely have a bump. I think more so than when I was pregnant the first time because your body is already, you know, it's already been stretched into that position. So I just think that your like uterus sits more forward in your stomach and everything just kind of sticks out a bit more, plus I'm bloated. This is where I really notice kind of that funny shape. Um, and it's very hard in there. Uh, and so I think it's a combination of like bloating and again, like the shape of my uterus, but there's a little bump for 12 weeks. I'm very happy about it. I am somebody who tries to keep like a positive body image throughout my pregnancy. So, you know, with my pregnancy with Wilson, I was not a cute pregnant person. I put on a lot of fluid and I put on about 40 pounds, but I'm just trying to be happy, you know, that I'm pregnant and kind of embrace every stage that I go through. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you are pregnant along with me, please leave that in the comment section below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe to my channel and I will see you next week in my pregnancy update video. Bye.